Why did you label those numbers imaginary? My God, it's the worst name in all worst of math. Worst name ever. And then, then you add another aspect to the imaginary number to get the complex number. Right. And now you call it a complex? These are words that are complete turnoffs. And I blame you. Well, I mean, if that's the <laughs> case. I blame your people. I, blame. I was going to say, if that's the case, then we need to go all the way back to the beginning because we call them math problems. And who wants to deal with problems? Right. <laughs> I mean, the, the, so many people struggle with this, right? Because you label it as imaginary. You, you start by pitching it by saying, you know, square roots of negatives don't exist, but pretend like they do and run forward. And like you could you could teach the whole topic completely differently, where you start off by talking about processes that cycle and trying to model processes that cycle and using our normal number systems for that. But there were certain cubic equations where when you tried to use the formula, you can find that real valued answer if you take seriously the idea that somewhere inside that formula there's a square root of a negative and it all cancels out at some point. But like while you're working it out, you're engaging with these square roots of negatives. And I think one of the reasons they were called imaginary is because it took a long time for people to take them seriously. They just thought it was this notational trick. And they were, like the word imaginary was kind of derogatory. 